So for today, we'll be discussing aralin 10, mga issues sa karapatang pantao. But for this morning, we'll be discussing the very core topic of aralin 10, which is all about Bill of Rights. Okay? So kalipunan ng mga karapatan. So basically, the first question is, what are the Bill of Rights? The Bill of Rights is the declaration and enumeration of the individual rights and privileges and is designed to protect violations against individuals and the limitation on the power of the state. Okay, so again, I will repeat the Bill of Rights class are those declaration at the same time the enumeration of your rights, of everybody's rights. So, hindi lang po ito right ng ilang tao, kundi ito ay karapatan ng bawat isa sa atin. The rights or the individual rights. Now, now comes rights are privileges. Okay, so I want you on your notebook. You can um can you if you can please research the distinction or the difference between rights and privileges. Okay, because these rights and privilege are two different things. Okay, so if you'll be able to research the distinction of the two. You'll have a full grasp of what Bill of Rights is. So later on, uh, maybe I can discuss with you the distinction between the two. The Bill of Rights is also designed to protect violations against individuals and in the limitation on the power of the state. Okay, so ang Bill of Rights din po mapoprotekta sa bawat individual o bawat tao sa ating mga tao laban sa posibleng pang-aabuso ng estado o ng kahit sinong individual. Okay. That uh, this is the brief description of the Bill of Rights. Now, as far as human rights is concerned, class, we have three classifications of human rights. Number one, we have natural rights. Number two, we have constitutional rights. And lastly, we have statutory rights. Okay, let's begin first our discussion with um, natural rights. What are these? What are those? Natural rights. Now, on your book in Avalin 10, there is a um, brief description of what natural rights is. Sabi po dito, ang bawat tao ay may kapapatang mabuhay. Ang kapapatang ito ay likas at wagas para sa lahat. So, natural rights are given to any individual even um, before birth. Okay? Kahit nung nasa sinapupunan pa lang po tayo ng ating mga magulang, Mayroon na po tayong natural rights. And what are these natural rights? For example, ang karapatang isilang is, also, is already an example of natural rights. We have the right to live. Ang bigyan tayo ng pangalan or identity, that's already also a natural rights. Okay? So again, those are natural rights. How about constitutional rights and statutory rights? Okay. Now, constitutional rights and statutory rights are under category of rights according to laws. Okay? But rights according to laws are categorized or divided into two, constitutional and statutory. Now, when you say constitutional rights class, these are karapatang kaloob at pinapangalagaan o binibigyang proteksyon ng ating saligang batas o konstitusyon. So basically, whatever stipu is stipulated in the 1987 constitution, these are all our constitutional rights. On the other hand, we have statutory rights. What are these statutory rights? Ito ang mga kapapatang kaloob ng mga batas na, pinag, na pinagtibay ng Kongreso o tagapagbatas. So, ang statutory rights class, these are the rights na nakapaloob sa batas na ginawa ng Kongreso. Okay? Both from the House of Representatives and Senate. Okay? So, sana po malinaw. Uulitin ko. Under constitutional rights, these are the rights um, in the 1987 Constitution, while well, statutory rights are rights um, which are in the laws created by Congress. Okay. Okay. Now we have different kinds of rights. Okay. We have political rights. No. We, uh, we have civil rights. We have social and economic rights, and also we have the rights of the accused. Yung 22 sections po ng Bill of Rights, these are all rights under this four 
categories of rights. So later on, we'll be able to determine whether a particular section in the Bill of Rights is under political, civil, social, and economic, or rights of the accused. Okay. Let's now start discussing Section 1. So what is the Section 1 of the Bill of Rights? According to Section 1 of the Bill of Rights, no person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor shall any person be denied of the equal protection of the laws. Okay, so Bill of, uh, our, our Article 3, Section 1, this particular provision is quite short. No? Maikli lang itong provision na ito. But in fact, many scholars, uh, many legal scholars class believes that even if you erase um, the Section 2 to 22 of the Bill of Rights and you just let Section 1 stay under the Bill of Rights, it already covers the entire panoply of human rights. Ibig sabihin, kahit daw tanggalin natin ng Section 2 to 22, itira lang po natin ng Section 1, halos cover na po ng Section 1 ang lahat ng kapapatang pantao. Okay, why? Because under Section 1, again, it provides, walang sino mang taong pwedeng pagkaitan, no person shall be deprived of life, liberty, and even property. Okay, Kindly take note of these three significant terminologies under Section 1. Life, liberty, or property without due process of law. Okay? Nang hindi sumusunod sa tamang proseso ng batas. At walang sino mang tao ang pwede daw pagkaitan natin no, ng pantay na pangangalaga ng batas or equal protection of the laws. Now, now let's try to understand what do we mean by due process of law? Because due process and equal protection of the law are the two clauses under Section 1 which are very vital and which make Section 1 a very significant provision under the Bill of Rights. Now, due process of law is meant that if a person is deprived of life, liberty, or property by the state, uh, by the state, it must be done only under the authority of a valid law and after compliance with the regular methods and procedures prescribed by the law. Actually, class, if we'll try to go back to Section 1, no person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. It, we, can own, we can derive into a logical conclusion na pwede naman palang i-deprive ang tao ng buhay, karapatan, or kalayaan and even properties. But we cannot deprive these people of these three significant aspects if we do not follow due process of law. Okay? So, dapat daw, kinakailangan, it must be done. If we will be depriving a person, if the government will be depriving a person of their life, liberty, or property, it must be done under the authority of a valid law. So, for example, if a person class is charged in violation of a particular crime, that person dapat, bago siya kulihin, kinakailangan may file muna yung kaso laban sa kanya. Hindi pwede huhulihin siya basta-basta. But of course, there is an exemption. So later on, I might discuss with you what we call civilian arrest. Okay? That's uh, later on the later part of our discussion. Okay? Basta ang ibig sabihin po ng konsepto ng due process of law, pwede pong i-deprive ang tao ng karapatan na mabuhay o ng kanyang life, liberty, or property. Basta dapat sumusunod tayo sa kung anong sinasabi ng batas. It's either under the constitution or under a particular statute. Okay? Now, due process is divided still into two. We have the procedural and substantive due process. No? Again, there are two particular or two um, categories or types of pro, uh, due process of law. We have um, procedural due process and substantive due process. Now, under procedural, the elements of a procedural due process, there should be notice, notices and hearing. Number two, jurisdiction over the person or subject matter. 
Number three, impartial court or tribunal. Number four, defendant or party is given chance to be heard. And lastly, judgment is given only after lawful hearing. Actually, this is what we are um, what we are doing in the Philippine judicial system or justice system. It's more a procedural due process rather than substantive due process. But what do we mean by substantive due process? Under substantive due process, the state must not exercise arbitrary power. Okay. Ibig sabihin, hindi pwedeng makialam sa Estado o si gobyerno sa kung paano lilitisin ang bata ang isang krimen o ang isang um, case. No? Other than that, substantive due process is a guarantee that life, liberty, and property shall not be taken away from anyone without due process of law. Now, um, in order for substantive due process to be properly invoked, No, kung para ito ay uh, maging successful ang paggamit ng substantive due process, this will require, number one, a law, a valid law. And this valid law must have been passed or approved to accomplish a valid governmental objective. That, uh, number two, the objective of this law must be pursued in a lawful manner. And number three, the law as well as the means to accomplish the objective must be valid and not oppressive. Okay, after due process of law, we also have the equal protection clause. Diba? Diba dalawang clause po yun? The first one is the um, due process of law and number two is the equal protection of the law. Right? So, Those are the two. So what do we mean, class, by equal protection clause or equal protection of the law? Each person should be dealt equally in law. But the reality is that people and things, circumstances, are situated differently. Thus, this means that everyone belonging to the same class must be treated in the same way. Similarly situated persons or things must be treated similarly. Okay. So ang ibig sabihin po class ng equal protection of the law, kinakailangan may pantay na pagtingin at pagprotekta ang batas sa mga tao. No? That's why under this description, it underscores and it um, provides the, that equal protection of the law mean, means that we have to treat people in the same way. Especially if this, if the if the crime committed or if the charge committed is the same, hindi pwede na kung pocket mayaman iba ang trato, hindi pocket pag mahirap iba din ang trato. Kung pareho na commit ng crime yung mayaman at mahirap, they should mahirap, they should be treated in the same way. Okay, that's what equal protection of the law means. Now let's move now to section two of our of the Bill of Rights. Under Section 2 of the Bill of Rights, it provides the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures of whatever nature and for any purpose no, shall be inviolable. And no search warrant or warrant of arrest shall issue except upon probable cause to be determined personally by the judge after examination under oath or affirmation of the complainant and the witnesses he may produce. No? And particularly describing the place to be searched no? and the persons or things to be seized. Okay, class, I'll, I want to explain this as brief as I can and as careful as I can. Okay? Because Section 2 is very important also. Section 2 talks about the issuance of search warrant and warrant of arrest. Okay? So, according to Section 2, ang kapapatan daw ng mga tao, okay? our right to be secure in our persons, meaning sa ating sarili, houses, sa ating mga respective na bahay, 
paper, sa ating mga dokumento, and even effects, which means properties, against unreasonable searches and seizures. This is the difference class between search and seizure. Pag search, hahanapin lang. May hinahanap. Pag seizure, kukunin sa'yo. Okay? Against unreasonable searches and seizure, kahit anong nature yan at kahit anong purpose yan, hindi pwedeng ma-violate, shall be inviolable. So hindi pwede tayo na ma-subject to search and seizure kung wala namang tamang rason, no legal reason to do so. And, and always remember that search warrant and warrant of arrest can only be issued by a judge. So it means only a judge, no, only a judge of a court in proper jurisdiction can issue a warrant of arrest and search warrant. Question now. Sir, basta-basta na lang po ba mag issue ang judge ng warrant of arrest or search warrant? No. The answer is no. Because the judge should determine whether there is what we call a probable cause. Okay? Tandaan po yan ha. So kinakailangan si judge, meron muna po siyang probable cause to de uh, na i-determine niya based sa information niya. So kunyari nag-file ka ng kaso, titingnan ni o kunyari may may allegation. For example lang po ha. For example, there is an allegation that in the house of A, merong mga baril, unregistered firearms, no? Hindi lisensyadong firearms at hindi naka-register ng mga baril. Now, there should be a, an evidence to support that claim para pag pinakita ni prosecutor ngayon kay judge, si judge maniniwala siya. At yung picture na yon and other testimonies of possible witnesses is equal now to a probable cause. Ibig sabihin, pwedeng totoo yung allegation. Okay? Hindi pa po ito nag-rule si judge ha. Probable cause pa lang yung nakita niya na possible talaga meron kasi si judge mag -e execute siya ngayon ng warrant of arrest and search warrant. Kaya nga si judge, para ma-determine may probable cause, i-examine niya muna under oath or affirmation yung complainant at yung mga witnesses na pwedeng ma-produce ni complainant na dapat describe nung complaint na yun kung ano kung saan yung lugar na hanapi ha, na paghahanapan at kung sino yung tao at kung ano yung mga bagay no yung mga bagay na kukunin na isisiz okay uulitin ko po uh, for your for emphasis warrant of arrest and search warrant can only be issued by a judge but the judge should examine first under oath or affirmation, the complainant. Sisiya sa atin nung judge kung yung statement ng complainant may substance, may value. And aside from the complainant, kung may mga witnesses na pwedeng maproduce si complainant, titingnan din ni judge yung testimony ni witnesses kung nagtutugma ba. O baka si witnesses nakiki... Um, meron tinatawag na collusion. Nakikipag contact tayo complainant, babayaran siya as a witness for instance. So, madidetermine naman ni judge and ni prosecutor o ni fiscal kung merong um, sabuatan no, na nanagaganap para idiin si akusado. Okay. So, that is under Section 2 which makes Section 2 also very important. So, I would appeal to everybody since you are already a student of my subject and also, you have learned already about Section 2. Pag may pupunta pong pulis sa inyo, sa bahay ninyo, or kahit po yan ay tanod lamang, or kahit sino pa po yan nagpapakilalang persons in authority, if they want to search your house, do not let them in. Ask for a search warrant. Okay? Same thing plus kunyari aarestuhin kayo. Huwag po kayong pumayag na arestuhin kayo o kung sino mang taong kilala nyo 
na wala pong warrant of arrest because that's already an illegal arrest and you can file actually for a case sa mga nag detain sa mga nag-aresto sa iyo for detention no for illegal detention kasi i-detain ka nila na wala ka namang wala naman silang hawak na warrant of arrest and you have to understand yung content ng search warrant and warrant of arrest kinakailangan doon sa search warrant class ha pakitandaan doon po sa search warrant na ipapakita dapat nung persons in authority, it should particularly describe kung anong hahanapin nila. Okay? So, ano ba yung lugar, the place to be searched, at kung ano yung mga bagay na kukunin nila, na posible nilang kunin. Okay? Nagkakaintindihan po tayo ha. So, since may knowledge na po kayo, huwag pong basta-basta magpapasok ng kung sino-sino tao sa inyong mga pamamahay para lang po mag-search sila o hulihin kayo. Please ask, secure a copy of the search warrant and warrant of arrest. And if that search warrant or warrant of arrest is issued by a judge or I'm sorry, by a person na hindi naman siya judge, invalid po yung search warrant and warrant of arrest na yun. Because you can invoke section 2. Kamo, Section 2 provides that search warrant or a warrant of arrest can only be issued by a judge. Okay? So I hope um, malinaw po sa atin ang Section 2. Okay. This is the warrant issued by the judge. Okay? So na, na, laman, uh, na discuss ko na rin to sa inyo. So when are the searches, seizures, and arrest becomes invalid? Paano ngayon masasabi natin invalid yung paghahalughog pagkuha at pag-aresto. Any ev an evidence or any evidence obtained illegally is inadmissible in any proceeding. Any evidence acquired illegally is excluded from being considered by the judge. There is a great probability that the accused may be acquitted. Okay, ang point po nito class ganito. Kunyari pumasok sila sa bahay ninyo, kunyari si B Si B ay isang private citizen. Okay, so people who are claiming or several persons claiming who are part of persons in authority enter the dwelling of B. And then, sabi nila, may, uh, magsisearch sila. Okay? At, um, kasi daw ina-allege na doon kay B meron daw mga let's say drug paraphernalias. Okay? So, Kunyari, itong si mga persons in authority, may nakuha silang mga sachets, no? Ng for example, methamphetamine or shabu, for instance, no sachet. Ngayon, dinetain nila si B kasi daw merong um, for in ba uh, for violating the law for drugs, no? The comprehensive uh, drug prevention law. Okay, so now In the court proceeding class, sa paglilitis, the accused can invoke na walang tabang prosesong nangyari during the search and seizure operation. They can invoke Section 2 of the Bill of Rights that these people who are claiming to be persons in authority entered the dwelling without a search warrant. And therefore, any evidence that they have obtained during the search and seizure operation are inadmissible. Meaning, hindi po siya tatanggapin ni judge bilang ebidensya. Okay? But there is an exemption to the rule. The, rule, the exemption to the rule is if, this, if the person is a risk to national security. Ibig sabihin, kung this is a case of terrorism, if this is a case of sedition, no? so, pag, pag, or rebellion, No, ibang usapan po yun. So these are the allowable warrantless searches. So ito po class yung mga ano, ibig sabihin, pinapayagan po ito ng ating batas na isearch kahit, kahit po walang warrant. Number one, a person who is validly arrested may be searched in his person. Kaya inaresto yung tao. For example, aktual na nakita na pinatay niya kunyari si kunyari si A aktual na nakita ang pinatay si B so si A ngayon kakapkapan siya okay search po yun hindi lang po ang search sa bahay ha searched in his person kinakapkapan po siya nakita yung kanyang 
um, uh, weapon na ginamit sa pagpatay kay B. Okay. So that particular weapon can be used now as evidence. Hindi pwedeng sabihin ni A na ay wala kasi wala naman kayong search warrant na pinakita. Hindi po pwede 'yon, no? So tatanggapin po ni judge yung ebidensya kasi allowable po siya. Number two, an officer who legally enters a premise and sees an illegal object may seize it. Okay? So, who legally enters. Pag pinapasok nyo class ang tao na yan, no? even without a warrant, at may nakita siyang illegal object, for example, let's say, um, grenades, no? mga granada, because unregistered naman siya, no? that can be um, admissible as evidence. A moving vehicle with reasonable suspicion may be stopped and searched for criminal activity. Okay? So suspicion may be stopped. You can you can be stopped and you can be searched for criminal activity. But uh, may I point this out that for those who are driving vehicles, pwede, kunyari kila sa sakyan. No? Kunyari, um, pinara kayo ng police officers and they made you stop in a corner. Okay? Rule the rule the, the first rule there is never get out of your car. Okay? Huwag pong lalabas ng sasakyan. If the police officer wants to search, to conduct search, let them search, let them conduct their search, but you should stay inside and never let them in. Okay, that's the rule. They are not allowed to um to get inside your vehicle and to touch your belongings inside your vehicle or inside your car. And hindi nyo po kailangang buksan yung likod na compartment ng sasakyan ninyo. Okay? They should give you a reasonable re, uh, reasonable um, suspicion. Dapat makapag-present sila ng reasonable suspicion. For example, may gumagalaw sa likod ng compartment mo. That's already a reasonable suspicion. At pwede mo talaga at pupwersahin ka ng mga police officers to open your back compartment. Pero kung wala naman, pwede lang pwede sila mag-flashlight class sa labas na lang at ilawan nila yung nasa loob. Okay? So, ganun po yun. Number four, one who consents to be searched may be searched without a warrant. Pag pumayag kayo class na i-search kayo, no? of course, that particular things na masisist sa inyo can be admissible as evidence. Okay? And lastly, searches may be made without a warrant or at customs or airports prior to boarding. So, di ba sa airport or ports, sa mga ship ports, ganyan, mayroong mga tinatawag ng mga machine na nag scan ng ating mga belongings. No? So, pag may na-found out sila doon na hindi mo declare doon sa mga things na dala mo, of course, you can be held liable for that. At hindi mo pwedeng i-invoke sa Section 2. O hindi mo pwedeng gamitin sa Section 2. Okay. Warrantless arrest. Kailan ba pwedeng arrestuhin si tao na walang warrant of arrest? Number one, when the person to be arrested has committed or is actually committing or is, is attempting to commit an offense. So, Number one is now discussing what we call consummated, frustrated, and attempted crime. Okay, so later on, I might discuss this in a separate, in a separate discussion or topic. So pag si, ta, pag si A kunyari na patunay na may balak siyang patayin sa letter B, even without or even if it's not yet happening, pag napatunayan na nagpe-prepare talaga siya para patayin ito, they can be arrested. O kunyari, Si letter A or si letter yeah si letter A kunyari nakita niya si B na planong saksakin si letter C. Okay? So nasa likod na kunyari ni B si C. Okay, si A kahit hindi pa pinapatay ni B si C, A can arrest B. Okay? Because attempting eh. He is attempting to commit an offense. So pwede pong arrestuhin yun kahit walang warrant of arrest. And papasok na po dito yung tinatawag nating civilian arrest. Pag, pag sinasabi po natin civilian arrest, ito po yung kahit hindi po tayo persons in authority, kahit hindi po tayo police, we can arrest a person. Okay? Pwede po natin arrestuhin yung tao. Basta actual na nakita natin na may balak siyang gawin o ginawa niya na, we can arrest the person. Okay? And that is allowed under our law. 
Number two, when an offense has in fact been committed and he has personal knowledge of facts indicating that the person to be arrested has committed it. Okay, ibig sabihin class ganito. Kunyari, si A killed B. Okay? Now si C is kasama niya sa boarding house. Nakita ni C na si A duguan or may mga dugo sa kanyang damit kasi pinatay niya si B. So C has knowledge of the facts na nag indicate na yung taong yun ay may ginawang krimen. So, pwede pong arestohin ngayon ni letter C si letter A. Okay, I hope you're getting the point. And number three, when the person is an escapee from a penal establishment, o kung tumakas yan sa kulungan, pwede po yung hulihin. Okay? Okay. 